Okay, this chapter was about people with disabilities. Disabilities, we kind of split them up into different types of disabilities, whether they're mobility or intellectual or developmental. A disability is just someone who has a permanent physical or mental impairment that is going to actively change the way that they have to live their life. Like I said, these can be developmental where they occur over the time of the person's life. Mobility is very specifically, and this may be the easiest to understand, folks that cannot uh, walk without the aid of some sort of assistance, whether that be with crutches or a walker or maybe they need a wheelchair or something like that. Some people will have more than one type of disability, but it's important to not assume that just because they have one, they will, will have other types of disabilities. Those who have physical differences are compelled them to achieve physical activities in alternative ways. Um, congenital disabilities are ones that are acquired before, during, or immediately after birth, within the first few months of life. Um, a lot of times now, we know that uh, children will be born with some sort of uh, disability, even while they are still in their mom. Okay, um, You can also have acquired disabilities. This is after the time of congenital disabilities. Maybe the, a stroke has caused a particular type of mobility or communication disability, uh, multiple scler sclerosis or some sort of spinal cord injury. Traumatic brain injury is another common one that we see on uh, all types of people. They, they've been in a car accident or they maybe they were a veteran and endured some sort of injury there. And that can give them a specific type of mobility disability or some other types of disability. Some, it's very important that we work with facts rather than myths whenever it comes to people with disabilities. Of course, there's a common belief, and people don't even realize they believe this many times, that if someone has a very severe physical disability, that they're less intelligent. You see this a lot of times with people that their physical disability makes it hard for them to speak. And because they cannot speak clearly or speak well, people assume that they are less intelligent, which is an erroneous assumption. Okay, um, Very intelligent people can have very debilitating physical disabilities. There's also a mistaken belief that they cannot function in society. Most people that have a disability function in society. They may need to figure out how they are going to function. But in reality, I think we all kind of need to figure out how we're going to function in, in modern society. They just may have a, a steeper hill to climb in some other ways. There's also the belief in spread of disability. If they have one, they have to have some, some others. Like I was talking about, if someone has this difficulty speaking, then they, people will assume that they have an intellectual disability. Or if they have a difficulty with ambulatory skills, then they may assume that they also have an intellectual disability. Self-determination can be a little tricky when working with this group because just because they have a disability, they still have the human right to decide how they want to live their lives. And it is our job as social workers to make sure that we are protecting their self-determination at all cost. Okay? It's their ability to function independently. Now, that does not mean that someone with a disability is going to make the same choice that you always would, but they have a right to make that choice unless they are harming themselves directly or other people. If Just because you think something is unwise does not mean that you have the right to change their, their decision or to take that self-determination away from them. Okay? It's also important that whenever we're working with people with disabilities that we focus on the person and not the disability itself. They're much more than a disability. It should not define them. In order to help with this, adopt a consumer-oriented approach. Know that the, they are the consumer in this case. It is our job to assist them. They know what they need. If we think we know what they need, we need to check with them first because it's quite likely they don't. Um, we also need to make sure that we are well educated about services and resources available in our community to make sure that they have the tools necessary so that they can give help or that they can take care of themselves. It's our job to advocate for them. Okay? It is not our job to, to tell them what they need. 
some examples of different disabilities. The deaf community is a very specific community that deals with hearing loss, okay? But deaf folks in the United States have developed their own culture over the last hundred years or more, um, and it is disrespectful to tell deaf people what they need. Deaf people know what, what they need, and it may not include hearing, okay? Some deafness can be uh, cured by cochlear implants, or at least assisted, but there, I've known quite a few deaf folks who did not want the cochlear implants because they're like, this is my life and how it is. They did not want to do that. They have the right to do that. They have the right to say, no, this is a treatment that I do not want. Um, autism. Um, if you, this has become certainly more, we're more knowledgeable as a society about autism than we were a generation ago. But people with autism, their brain works differently. They, typically, they are very interdirected. They will develop a few things, perhaps, that they are very knowledgeable about. Sometimes they will experience communication difficulties. Self-stimulation, the people that uh, have autism will often refer to this as stimming. They may wave their hands in front of their faces. They may dance. They may do many other things that may appear a little bit out of the ordinary. Um, for a while, this was called Asperger syndrome if they were a lower level of impairment. Um, but typically, the more correct approach to this and the correct diagnosis name is autism spectrum disorder. While the folks that ha are, have autism spectrum disorder and are not as directly impacted by their autism, it can be a good thing because they're not as impacted. It can also present its own hardships because society doesn't understand that this person really does have something different about them, and so they may need some accommodations whenever it comes to work environment or school environment or something like that. As a society, we pretty much ostracized these folks early in the United States history. Then we started institutionalizing them. Uh, 1970s and 80s, we started doing away with the deinstitutionalization and brought people back into regular schools, okay? and developed much more individualistic planning. The idea for the consumer model approach that I mentioned earlier started in the 1990s. And we also started to realize that families many times may need some support when they have a family member who has a disability. One of the things that someone said to me that always impacted me is just because someone has special needs doesn't mean they're gonna be born into or live in a house or a family that has special resources to deal with those special needs. So many times the family may need support in physically or financially or emotionally in dealing with, uh, with what's being asked of them. The largest piece of legislation that's been enacted that, that would impact folks with disabilities is the American Disabilities Act of 1990, often referred to as the ADA. This basically stated that someone with a disability still has the right to uh, public education being treated fairly in the work environment. I realize this was a really, really fast covering of uh, Chapter 11, um, but I hope that I hit on some main topics that will allow you to go back in the text and look at those areas and expand on them. And if you have specific questions, please feel free to contact me through the course.